welcome back to Space Engineers on the Xbox One. This is the retail version of the game, not the beta. And this is the Vagabond Star. And this is my tutorial on jump drives, the one I promised in the previous video. Now this won't be as in-depth as, say, Splits' tutorial on the PC version of jump drives, which I highly recommend you go and check that out if you want more detail on some of the numbers that go into jump drives. This is for new players more than anything who may want to use a jump drive and want to know a few things about how to use them and also what to avoid when using them. So this is the Vagabond Star. She only has one jump drive and I'm going to take you on board so you can see the jump drive and how it works. Now jump drives are quite big so before we do that I'll just show you where I've hidden mine they are it's underneath this plating there you can see it with the green light it's a large um, block very large so you'll need some room on your ship if you want to have one or even more than one anyway to the cockpit I've already mapped the controls, and because we're on the retail at the moment, the uh, beta has the fixed D-pad, so you can use page 2, 3, etc. <coughs> you can't on the retail at the moment until uh, Microsoft approves the patch. What we have is we have a jump drive on this thing, and you can see it's mapped to down on the D-pad. So before we talk about mapping, we'll talk about the jump drive itself. The jump drive has some settings to take a look at. So if we go into the control panel and we go search jump rather than trying to scroll down through the list you'll see one jump drive. So this jump drive <coughs> has a distance of 886 kilometers as a blind jump. Now a blind jump will jump you straight forwards at that distance and the more drives you have on your ship the greater that distance becomes. However, with jump drives they will draw power from each other. So if you have more than one jump drive and you want an emergency jump drive you'll need to turn that block off from the cockpit otherwise if you jump and you exceed your distance, the other jump drive will draw from it and drain it. Maybe fully, maybe partially. So you'll be left without any means to jump until the thing recharges. So what we want is we want to go to say Triton. We don't want to do a blind jump. So Triton is here in my list so we use the d-pad and we go down until we reach triton then we push up on the left stick until select and we hit select now it'll tell us if you see that we can only jump point zero three at point zero point zero three percent basically not as far as Triton's jump point is from where we are. Still, it's better than nothing. So now, you can see Triton in the distance, look. And there's Triton's jump point. It is 2,823 kilometers away. We'd need at least two more jump drives to make that distance comfortably in one jump. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down on the D-pad and then we're going to flick through our list of drives and things. There's the jump drive, look. We press A on it and select jump and it's as simple as that. I'm not going to do that because I already have it linked. When you're ready to jump, you press down on the d-pad you'll get some information it will tell you how far you can go what achievable distance at the jump you can do your weight of your transported mass 
any jump drives on board that are operational and any sealed crew. This is an important tip. If you are not sitting down in a cryo chamber or a bed or connected to the ship in some way like another seat or control seat you'll be left behind when the ship enters jump. So press A. We will have a five second countdown in a second. Five, four, three, two, one, jumping. And look, Triton's closer. We've jumped our maximum jump distance. We've still got a long way to go. So we're going to have to wait for this thing to recharge. And if you look, it's charging slowly. So you can check it. Control panel. Jump. Down on the D-pad. Click across on the left stick. Then down on the D-pad again. See all your information on the right. In six minutes time, we can jump. We're not going to wait that long. I'm not going to make you suffer through waiting for a jump drive to recharge. So we're going to we're going to use the admin menu on the right bumper and Y, and we're going to go to cycle objects, which we already have. So you come down from admin tools to cycle objects, then change to biggest grids, and you'll see that it's already found my things we're going to teleport your character to the spectator camera and then we're going to press back on the B and then back again on the B and you can see that I've got a couple of vagabond stars already prepared with some extra bits bolted on another jump drive just so you can see what the effect is with A second or even third jump drive. So this version of the star hasn't got any controls linked. What it does have though is two jump drives. So back to the control panel. Now you should see a bit of a difference on these jump drives compared to last time. The max jump distance is now 1744 kilometers. So this ship would have made a better jump than previous. Now the Century Eagle can actually do a much bigger jump because it's in many ways a lighter ship than this one even though it's longer and bigger. It's also got more power. The Century Eagle is um, got a large nuclear reactor on board. What I wanted to talk about as well, things about jump drives, you cannot jump into or out of a planet's gravity well. See, natural gravity field blocks you from jumping. You can't jump through a planet and you can't jump through, um, usually can't jump through ships and things like massive asteroids it won't let you sometimes it may bring you out of jump into a hollowed out asteroid but that's rare so again we want press down on the d-pad and you can see that will take us 1744 kilometers away from our destination as a blind jump or give us the maximum jump distance as part of a regular jump see 2823 kilometers away is our test jump point so now Another version of the Vagabond Star awaits. And this one has three jump drives. And he's much more uh, likely to... I can find it. Where's it gone? 
<laughs> it's always the way. There it is. Hiding. So I'll show you at the back. It has three jump drives. Jump drive three. Two five eight three kilometers maximum that this ship can jump. Which is pretty cool. Just gonna rename this first jump drive to jump drive one. So, at a blind jump, that can get us to our destination pretty accurately. We'd still only have a short distance to fly. And as I'm going to demonstrate just before I close this particular video, there is a minimum jump distance as well. You couldn't use a 500 or 600 metre jump point like this one here to jump to. It just won't happen. It will warn you that the minimum distance is 5,000 metres. So it's it's not worth um, doing. So what we want to do is you can see our jump point up here is there. remap our jump drive onto the D-pad. It's a problem with copied grids. Same jump. And then now we can do a blind jump directly towards it. Or going back to the control panel searching for our jump drives we only need to set one the others will cooperate with it go okay, to the test jump point hit select we can do 9% or 0.9 of this jump press down on the d-pad So it will tell you that we can do 91.53% of this jump now with all the drives attached. We have three operational jump drives, one sealed crew, and we're going to jump. Here we go. And boop. We are now only 239 metres from test jump point. So that was a successful jump. And now we've got to wait about seven or eight minutes for all of our drives to charge. And one final demonstration before I head off and close out this video. We'll get back here. This is what happens on a ship when you have a friend or you yourself forget to sit down in any chair, cryopod bed, anything like that, and a ship jumps, you're going to be left behind in space with no support and in survival mode if you don't have any way of recharging and your friends don't come back for you, you are going to end up somewhat inconvenienced and eventually dead. 
And that is my short tutorial on jump drives, things about jump drives, things to remember, gravity wells, solid objects, point jumping, blind jumping, rough recharge times for various jump drives, and what happens if you combine more than one jump drive. Hopefully it's of some use and help. Remember, stay safe, take care, have fun, and happy engineering until the next one.